Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are mastering the measure tool. Specifically, we're going to look at the basics of bar lines in Finale. Now, bar lines are actually a part of the measure tool. And uh, of course, the measure tool is this guy here. It's a blank measure with a uh, whole rest in it. And um, changing bar lines in Finale is uh, fairly novel. All we have to do is select a measure and either double click it or we can actually just select it and press return or enter to get the measure attributes dialog box. And the, the part that concerns bar line is towards the top here. Now we have two different uh, rows here. We have a row for bar lines and we have a row for left bar lines. Uh, I'll talk about the left bar lines a little bit later, but the, uh, the main place you're gonna make these changes is in the top row where it says bar lines. Now the bar line here refers to the right bar line of the selection made. So I've selected measure one, so whatever I choose here will affect this, this bar line between measure one and measure two. So, you know, select something else, double bar line, and click OK, and you'll get your double bar line. Um, it's a lot easier with the measure tool uh, to just right click to get the contextual menu. There's an option here for bar line, and all you have to do is just choose double bar line, and it does that all at once. And again, you don't even need to be in the measure tool. In the selection tool, you can just do the same thing, and there you have it. So let's take a look at what kind of bar lines we have. We have the normal bar line, and we have the double bar line, which I've just shown you. We have the final bar line, which will give you the, you know, the final end bar line. You can put that anywhere in the piece that you want. We have a solid bar line, which is just the solid piece of that final bar line. We have a dashed bar line, which looks like that. There is an invisible bar line. And, uh, you know, what this will do, the invisible bar, bar line is, is really handy for a lot of um, uh, nifty things that you can do in Finale. It kind of looks like this is one measure now. Of course, it's not. We know that there's actually two measures. You can select each of them. Again, Finale thinks in frames in this regard. So there's you know two separate frames here. Um, but we can do a lot of uh, interesting things like split measures. We can put um, uh, you know key changes in the middle of measures or uh, make them appear to be in the middle of, of the measure. And all of that's really done a lot of times with the use of an invisible bar line. So that's a, a handy thing to recognize can be done in Finale is that the bar line can be made invisible uh, in the measure attributes window. We also have this tick option which gives you something that looks like that, just a little tick on the top of the staff. And we also have a custom option. Now, when you press custom, you'll pull up the shape selection dialog box, and there's a ton of shapes here that exist, but most of these are not gonna make any sense. In fact, if I choose the first one, which is this you know, multi-measure rest symbol, and try and use that for a bar line, you're gonna get some weird situation like this, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, with the customs, there's not a whole lot that are, um, particularly useful. There are some towards the middle here, number 102, 103, 104, and 105, um, which are kind of just like the, uh, the bar lines that you could select from here anyway. You've got the single, the dashed, the solid, and the double, uh, the final bar line. I mean, you could select that and it's, you know, pretty much the same as the final bar line. Um, but uh, what's handy about this is that you can, you know, take any one of these and duplicate it and use it as a template for a new type of bar line, which is exactly what I've already done in this file. I won't bore you with creating these exactly just yet, but uh, these last four things here I've created uh, to make some custom bar lines, including this one, which is sort of just a, a triple double, uh, a triple final bar line or something. I have no idea what I would use this for, but just to show you that it can be done. Um, you can do some weird things like this, where I've got a, a dashed and a solid with two, you know, circles on either side. Um, I've got this unique thing with a dashed and sort of a rectangle around it. And I even have one that says bar. So you can do something weird like that. Again, I have no idea what the applications of these would be <laughs> just yet, but um, just to show you that they are available. And of course, um, when you press the edit button, you'll pull up the shape designer, which I know I, it's, it's got to be in the works at some point. I promise I will do a video on the shape designer. But um, as it relates to uh, bar lines, the one tip I will sh uh, give you about this is that in the shape designer menu, make sure that the staff template is checked in the show. Um, otherwise, you won't really have a reference point for how long these lines are supposed to be. And uh, you get some weird results if these lines are not exactly the, the right length of the staff. So that's my one tip for the shape designer as relates to bar lines. Um, but as you can see, you can kind of you know do whatever you want with these bar lines and, and create some unique things, including this uh, triple bar line here if you really want. But let's just go back to the normal bar line 
for now. Now, if you select multiple measures, if you select multiple measures, you can uh, change all of these bar lines all at once. So if I just uh, select them, press return, and choose double bar line, what you'll see is that you'll get double bar lines on all of those measures. That will work if you use a contextual menu as well. So I've selected all four, right click, bar line, double, you'll see that you'll get bar lines, double bar lines on every single measure. Um, the other unique thing that can be done here is if you do something like this, where I've just selected all, press return to get into the measure attributes window, um, when you do this, you, you have the option to um, change every X number of measures. So I've selected measures 1 through 16, which is the end, and I could change every four measures, let's say. And then I could just choose double bar lines. And what this will do is, all in one shot, it will put a double bar line uh, every four bars. So there's one at the end of 4, there's one at the end of 8, 12, and 16. So that's sort of a, uh, a unique thing that you can do um, with the measure attributes window. Uh, if you do a select all, you can change the bar lines every X number of measures if you need to. So that's a little handy handy thing to do. Now, one other thing I should mention, uh, let's just go here to here. Some of these uh, bar line styles, the double, the final, the solid in particular, uh, you'll notice that when you select these by default, there are certain uh, other things that get selected. It's just sort of important to know what's happening here. It's actually selecting three things. First of all, it's overriding the group lot bar lines, which uh, I will get to at a later point. Um, but it's also breaking multi-measure rests, and it's also breaking smart word extensions. Um, if you choose a normal bar line, none of those options are checked. Same thing with dashed, uh, invisible, and tick. Um, this is sort of a courtesy, I think, because you know, with a double bar line, you almost certainly want to break a multi-measure rest. But if for some reason you want a multi-measure rest to go through a double bar line, you can uncheck this option, and that will allow you to create that multi-measure rest, um, you know, encompassing the, the the bar with a double bar line. You know, same with final, same with solid. Um, the other thing it does automatically, which I don't always necessarily agree with, is breaking smart word extensions automatically. That I actually wish was, you know, unchecked by default, but that, you know, it is what it is. And the override group bar line situation, I, I'm going to show you, I think, in a later video. So just FYI, some of these things will uh, change some of the other behaviors in the measure attributes automatically, unless you, you know, go ahead and uncheck it uh, intentionally. So, and then let's talk about the left bar line, because I told you I would talk about that later. So the left bar line, what you have to understand about this is that the whatever you choose here, it will only apply to that measure if that measure is the first measure of a system. So what I've gotten here is I've chosen measure four, and I'm going to change the left bar line to the double bar line, just to show you this. So, uh, so double bar line, click OK, and nothing happens. This left bar line is not changed to a double bar line because it's not really a left bar line. It's always a right bar line from the previous measure. However, if I were to take bar four and swing it down to the second system, now that bar four is the first measure of the system, bar four now has a left bar line, and you can see that the, the setting that I made so to have the double bar line there uh, will now show on that left bar line. And of course, we can set this however we want. We can choose the solid if we want, and we'll get something that looks like that. Um, not 100% sure uh, of the usefulness of this, but you can do this um, if, if you need to. It's just part of the flexibility. Now, you can do custom bar lines as well, invisible, all that stuff. Now, there is, um, you'll see there's a normal and there's a default. And you may be wondering, what's the difference between uh, normal and default? Well, the default setting here actually has to do with a setting in the document options, which I'm going to show you in the bar line section. Uh, towards the middle, there's some uh, options for the left bar line, including display on single staffs, display on multiple staffs, etc. But there's also uh, default style is normal bar line or default style is previous measures right bar line, right? So that default setting in the left bar line in, in the measure attributes is referring to these options here. So again, the default is, uh, by, by default, the default is set to normal bar line out of the box. But if you change this to match the m previous measures right bar line, um, nothing will appear now because I haven't changed the uh, previous measure. Actually, let me do this, put that back there. So if I were to go ahead and change bar four here to a double bar line, you'll see that the right bar line at the end of the system gets to a double bar line. But as well, 
the left bar line is matching the right bar line uh, of the previous system because of that setting in the, uh, the document options. Now, when you have that setting set like that in the document options, one thing you'll notice is that you will not get a bar line on the left side of the very first measure because there's no bar line to reference in the previous system, right? There's no previous system. So if you're going to use that option for this very first measure, you kind of need to make sure that you select normal uh, just to get that left connecting bar line there. All right, and so that would be why there's a default and a normal for the left bar line, okay? The default is just referring to um, that option within the document options, and uh, so that's how that works. Let me go back here and go back to default style is normal bar line. And uh, so, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the left bar line. Again, it only applies to the... Uh, to the to the left bar line, if that bar happens to be on the um, the start of a system. Now, interestingly, if you really want to, uh, if you wanted the left bar line to always be something specific, the best way to do this is to just select all of the measures and choose the um, left bar line. Let's say we're going to make this solid, right? And Again, this is applying to every single measure, but it's only you know it, it only matters that the measure five is the start of the system. But what this will allow to happen is that if you move measure four, you'll still get that you know move measure four to the second system, you'll still get that solid bar line. Measure three, same thing. So this way, no matter what uh, bar is at the start of a system, you'll always get that uh, solid bar line. Um, as the default. That's because I selected all and chose a uh, solid bar line for the left bar line. All right, so that's kind of how that works. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video right now is sort of the interplay between the, uh, the bar lines in the measure attributes here and the staff attributes. So um, with every staff, if we go into the staff attributes, we, we have the option to display bar lines or not. It's over here in the bottom right. It's the second option uh, where it says bar lines. So you'll see that you know pretty much every staff, well, every staff, is going to have bar lines selected. But we can choose to unselect that in the Soprano staff, for example. And you'll see that all of the bar lines go away for the Soprano staff. Now, it doesn't matter what bar line I use from the measure attributes. Uh, I'm never going to see a bar line anywhere in the entire Soprano staff. Um, now, this can have applications uh, if you're doing sort of like, you know, uh, things where the bar lines are sort of non-standard and you kind of need to manually draw them in. This is exactly how you would do that. Just choose the staff attributes and uncheck bar lines for whatever uh, staffs that you need to not have them. And with staff attributes, of course, we can also create staff styles, um, which would apply those staff attributes uh, more locally. So if I'm going to, let's do this real quick. I'm going to define a new staff style. I'm going to call this no bar line. Uh, there we go. Copyable. You always want to make these copyable. And uh, where it says items to display instead of the minus sign, meaning that there's no change, we're going to uncheck it, meaning that uh, we're intentionally not displaying the bar lines and click OK. And now when we uh, use that staff style, um, what you'll see is that uh, it will delete the right bar line from the measure. So this is also a, a handy tool if for some reason you needed to do something unique where, you know, in what for whatever reason this measure, this bar line needs to happen a beat earlier, you can just, uh, you know, choose the uh, staff attributes to hide that, uh, that bar line um, and then draw one in with a with an expression or something would be an, would be a way to do that so that you can kind of offset your bar lines uh, in whichever way you need to. All right, and uh, so yeah, so that's sort of the interplay between the bar lines and the staff attributes. Essentially, if the staff attributes is not showing bar lines, it doesn't matter what you do in the measure attributes. You can never show a bar line uh, on a staff that's not showing bar lines. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. You know, there's a there's a, a bunch of other things to do with group bar lines, but I think I'm gonna um, I think I'm gonna save that for the next video. So, uh, yeah, so that's sort of the basics. It's a lot for bar lines, and um, I hope this makes sense. And uh, yeah, so that there you go. Uh, so come back for the next video. I think I'm gonna talk specifically about um, some of the unique properties of group bar lines and how they draw between staffs and everything. And uh, so we'll talk about that next.
All right, so thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next Mastering the Measure Tool video.